Hello sir, we would like to know about your personal life, passion and career. Okay, well, uh, my, about my childhood I think I spent about uh, 17 years in Kerala. Then I went to Andhra Pradesh where my brother was working for the central government and I did my first degree at uh, Andhra University. And after completing my degree, I went on to went to Madhya Pradesh, where I did my post-graduation in English literature, that was uh, at Bhopal University. And um, immediately after my post-graduation, I was I was lucky to get a post in the same college, and I became assistant professor there for uh, for about five years or so. Then. Uh, a relative of mine asked me, sent me an application form from Nigeria. Then I was uh, recruited by the Ministry of Education in Nigeria, where I spent about seven years teaching higher secondary and senior higher secondary students there. Then afterwards, I got another stint in Saudi Arabia, where I worked for five years in the teaching uh, department itself. Then I came back to India. Then I completed my B.Ed, M.Ed, E.M.Phil. Uh, I took a break for about three to four years. Then finally, I went to UAE, where I spent about uh, 16 years or so. Okay, and that was a, a blessing in this case in the sense that I could further my education. That was where I could earn some foreign exchange so that I could get. Uh, uh, a teaching degree in how to teach non-native speakers. So that's a license and I have it from Trinity College London. And I worked for the ruling family of the UAE for about uh, 15 years or so. So I was recruited by the family in order to teach their children. And when they came of age, that is uh, 2013, I came back to India and I joined the Kerala State Civil Service Academy. And until then, they were learning only one subject, yes, English. So I just talked to the director and finally, we bifurcated English into two, English optional subject plus communicative English. So communication matters a lot because no matter who you are and what your qualifications are, you have to communicate, you have to exchange your ideas. I mean, you have to express your idea, to express what you intend to do, what your opinions are, what you think about a particular thing. So communication is the very, the, I mean, the, the purpose of learning any language. Okay? It is meant for communication. Why do you learn a language? Not for literature alone. You need to communicate with the people. You have to talk to and exchange your ideas with the people you live with. That's communication is all about. To go about doing your business, Selling, buying, learning, teaching, talking, meeting people, okay, watching their movies, enjoying the life there, familiarizing yourself with their culture. This all involves communication. So this is primarily the reason why I have decided to take communication as my profession. Okay. About your family? Well, I have two children. The first one is uh, as a master's in MS in Information Technology and he is uh, currently in Bangalore. He is assistant director of a software company and he has two children. They are both settled in Bangalore and they have a daughter as well. She is, a, I mean, uh, she's teaching English at uh, Indian school Musket and she has a child as well. So I am here in Trivandra teaching learning and uh, sharing my experience with the students. That's what I do. I currently teach uh, a couple of civil service institutes. Lead IAS Academy, Kerala Labor and uh, Employment Department Academy. And uh, I'm a special invite or a personal trainer for Pathfinder program, Kerala uh, State, Kerala Directorate of Secondary Education, Kerala. Okay. In addition, when I get a uh, time, then I do some part-time, um, I mean, test preparation courses such as IELTS, mm -hmm. PT, and OET. Okay, so can you share any experience and exposures 
while traveling all around the world? Well, I have traveled far and wide and we've made. Yes, that's true. So what makes me different or what I find interesting is that I could communicate with people wherever I went using that one language. Okay. And second, if you want to be a dear or if you want to close to a community or a people or a society, you have to learn the language. And you have to uh, savor their food and you will know, you will learn quite a lot from their culture as well. So that you will know what you have to improve and what you have to shun. So a lot to learn from traveling abroad. Well, not only not only that you will learn their language their culture and uh, certain things you are used to which you think are not good for you or certain new things which you think properly will do i mean uh, probably that will improve upon your existing life or so so you, you stand to learn a lot of things and you will be a world citizen you will shun all your parochial or personal thinking that you you try to uh, different people who speak other languages, other culture, other faith, etc. You'll become uh, an international citizen. That's the advantage of uh, traveling abroad. You, you will not be a, what we call a, a selfish, self-centered person. You will be a world citizen. You'll be able to live and live with uh, any, uh, live with any people, live in any society. That's what I think I have gained from traveling abroad. Okay, what are the achievements uh, you've got in this field? Achievements is my experience. experience. Particularly when I went to these countries, there was no mother tongue where, I mean, my mother tongue, where I could converse with them. Mm -hmm. The only communicative medium was English. So I could improve upon my English. I, I, I mean, when I went to Nigeria, I had to work with the Canadians, Americans. I mean, those days, I'm talking about the 80s and uh, late 70s. So those were the time I got an access, rather exposure to uh, uh, native speakers. So that really helped me a lot, and that really shaped my attitude towards communicating English. Then later on, I had the privilege of uh, working there in in UK for about five years, and in the meanwhile, I took the degree as well. That was a blessing in disguise, although I never had any intention of going out of the country, but it happens. So what is your message to our generation? Generation is, uh, when it, precisely speaking, when it comes to communicate English, shun grammar. I mean, stop worrying about grammar. Start speaking. You don't have to make long sentences. Use two words, three words, five words, make phrases and communicate. Express your idea. Don't worry about them. If you ever think in English, or I mean, if you ever think in your mother tongue and translate into English, you will never pick up the language. So if you want to learn English language, I must say that you must think in English and speak in English. That's the only way. Don't use any any middle language or, or, or any other intermediary language. Straight English. Think English, speak English. That is precisely the message. And most of us, we insist on qualifications, but not the skill. Our teaching method also has to change. We should not lay more emphasis on grammar. Grammar should be taught, but just for the academic purpose. Maybe in the later stage, not in the preliminary stage, until four to five, I think we will have to teach them uh, the language, not grammar. Grammar should be taught maybe from grade five to ten. During that five year period, I think you can teach them grammar. But even when you cross the grade 10, 11 and 12, you have to have uh, application level. I mean, use what you have learned. That is what I mean by application. So this is what I have to say. Stop worrying about grammar. Start speaking English. And in a, maybe in, a, in three months' time or six months' time, you will be as good as I am. No problem.